Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for the chance you gave me to share your word. I pray, Lord Father, that every single word that comes out of my mouth right now, Lord Jesus, is from you. And I pray, Lord Jesus, that you work through me to change hearts and to change minds. And I pray, Lord Father, that we, this word, Lord Father, we can implement in our daily life and we can use it to improve our life, Lord Father. Amen. So, <clears throat> when I think about um, communion, I always think about it as, um, as like this magical like cleansing time. So, I, I don't know, like you guys always think about like, you know, green, green tea. We drink green tea and we, you know, we think that it cleanses our body and, you know, just goes through and cleans everything. That's the kind of thought I had about communion when I took, you know, the grape juice and, and the bread and it just goes down and it just cleanses me. And I had always this kind of relationship with communion, thinking about the list of things that I need to thank God for. Because, like, trust me, I have loads of things to thank God for. And I'm, I'm sure that all of you have as well. So I'll always have this kind of list I go through. I get in that zone, close my eyes, and I always feel like I have to have this list of these things that I need to thank God for. So, you know, when I was preparing for the sermon today, I was like reading, reading some scripture and I came through the passage of um, John, so John 6. Um, if you guys got your Bibles, uh, please go there with me so you can actually have a read or highlight it or save it. Um, and, you know, when we obviously, when we do communion, you know, we have the usual scripture of the different gospels where he says about Jesus breaking the bread and, you know, giving the wine and then obviously saying, um, take this as my body, take this as my blood. But I just wanted to kind of focus on the flesh and the body of God, of, of Christ. And on John 6, um, from verse 50, so 50 and 51, it says, This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which comes down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread that shall give is my flesh which I shall give for the life of the world. And I just want to focus in, obviously, on what Jesus did for us, okay? We all know we take communion because we want to remember. It's time to remember what Jesus did for us because he, gives, he gave us his life, basically. And, you know, we know this, but do we really understand this? He gave us his whole life. He came and he gave us his whole life and the only thing we have to do is accept him as, as our saviour. That's the only thing we have to do and all of it, all the sins, all the issues, all the problems, everything is just washed away. Everything. And all we have to do is just remember. All we have to do is when we take communion is remember what he did for us. That thing that he, you know, they, they make it seem small but giving your life to someone is not a small thing God gave his son's life his son's life to us for example would you give your daughter your son for someone's life I'm sure when it comes to that time when you're asked to do that you wouldn't because we feel that it's a precious thing for us. So always remember when we come to the table, when we come to share the blood and the body of Christ, that that's what he did for us. The extent that he went to. And, you know, as I said, I want to concentrate on the, the verse where he said, the bread I shall give is my flesh. So remember that when you take communion is not a ritual that we just do because we're Christians. It's not because we come to church on Sundays. But it's not something that we do once a month 
and it's done, you know, we're cleansed and we go away to, do, to live our lives. There's one thing that I want you guys to live with today, and if it's the only thing that you heard today, that's completely fine. And it comes from the verse in Acts 2, Acts 2, 46. And this verse basically, in Acts, obviously, it, it tells us about the apostles' lives and how they lived at, at those time, in those times. And there is um, one thing that actually like, struck me a little bit when, when, when I read it. And it says, it's uh, Acts 2, uh, verse 46. It says, So continuing daily with one accord in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate the food with gladness and simplicity of heart. As I said, one thing that I, got, I want you guys to live with today is communion is not just for church. Yes, we do it in church. We do it once a month. But I want you to teach your families, like my mom did, my dad did, to take the time to do communion at home with your families as well with your friends, with whoever it is, come to a table and do communion because communion is not just when you're in church to remember Jesus Christ, but it is a daily thing. The people in Acts, they couldn't have enough of it. They would do it every day. They would break bread every day. So when we're taking the bread, when we're taking the blood of Jesus Christ, it's something that gives us life. It's life poured into us. So we need to do it more and more if you want to have more and more life. You know when you get tired, when you get frustrated? You know, we, we talked about all the problems today and we put it all to the cross, right? We put it all in the cross where, where Jesus died. If we did that once and then next day we did it again, we still have problems every single day of our lives. We still have things that we go through every single day of our lives. And that is the time when we need to remember and come to God and say, God, I remember what you did for me. Thank you. Have that list like I did. And like, you know, I, there's, nothing, there's no issue with, I'm not against with, you know, taking communion and asking for forgiveness or repentance. That's not a problem at all. But communion is to build your relationship with Jesus Christ. That is the main thing about that. That's how they used it in the past, and that's why we need to use it again here. So don't just wait to do it in church, but whenever you feel there is an issue, whenever you feel away from God, whenever you feel far from God, it's not like, kids, this is for you as well. Your mom and your dad don't have to push you to do communion. They don't have to tell you, let's go to church to take communion for you know, the, once, the once a month thing, to drink a bit of grape juice and a bit of bread. But is something that if you have an issue, if you have something that you're struggling with, then you bring it up to your parents, mom, dad, let's do this. Okay? So please, guys, just remember, now as we take communion as well, yes, we're remembering what he did for us. And please say thank you. Keep saying thank you. Keep saying I love you. As we say in the song, everything that he did for us, not only he died for us, you know, he guides us, he protects us, he looks after us. Like, I'm, I'm 27 years old and I already have stories to tell about how he protected me. And I'm sure you guys have more stories than me. So don't be shy about thanking him for every single thing he's done. So please, guys, come back on the stage and let's get that I love you song going on again. <laughs> And I just want you guys to, uh, I think the table is going to get prepared and obviously we're going to take communion, but in that, in that time, um, yeah, just focus, get in, uh, in, uh, in the zone where you are next to him, you are there, and you are thanking him for what he's done, and you're enjoying his presence, okay?